So I wanted to show a couple of demonstrations on how the nervous system can affect range of motion in a joint. So we're going to take Ian's leg and we're going to go through just some very basic passive straight leg raises to just go as relaxed as he can. I don't want him to feel like he's completely limp while he's doing this one so I don't have any muscle resistance going through. But I'm just going to take you up, you tell me when to stop, when you feel a point where it's tight. Tight right there? Cool. So this would be where his range of motion is with no interference in the nervous system or no stimulation one way or another. Now what I want you to do is pretend like you're going to breathe but spit. So no, don't actually spit, but you know how they're like, like just kind of pulsing it. So I want you to do about five or six of those. Think like really hard breaths out. Good. Good. So what that breathing pulsation does is it increases st uh, sympathetic stimulation in a way that creates stabilization through the core and allows for alteration in neural tone that allows for a change in range of motion. So we can see he already improved his range of motion pretty significantly without doing anything to his hip and all I had him do was just kind of create like a pulse core contraction. So next we're going to apply a uh, different sympathetic stimulation to him. So what I'm going to do is just grab his arm. Give him a good solid whack, which kind of stimulates the fight or flight response. And you can see we've already decreased the range of motion. So if I give him a, a positive stimulus, like when he was doing the pulse breathing to create core, stimu or a core stabilization, he improved the range of motion in his hip. When I gave him a negative stimulus, which is where I smacked him on the shoulder, made him really jolt into a fight or flight response, he decreased range of motion.